In the 1980s, one tragic event reshaped American justice, sparking a legacy of racial disparity and unjust sentences. Discover how a critical mistake by Congress led to a harsh criminal system where low-level offenders face severe consequences meant for kingpins. This powerful video uncovers the flawed history of mandatory minimum sentences for crack cocaine, a policy that has disproportionately harmed communities of color. Former Judge Gleason exposes the unintended outcomes of these laws, including soaring guilty plea rates and the near disappearance of federal trials. You see all of these, these people coming in and you, by law, yes. have to put them away for a long time. Yes. What happens because of that? Injustice happens because of that. You look at the federal drug trafficking defendants, 7% of them are either a manager or a kingpin. 93% are low level folks, but the severity that Congress intended just for that top 7% is being spread across the entire docket. If you're the judge who's imposing that sentence, you feel pretty bad about it because your job is to do justice. One of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you was because uh, we want to get to know how all of this began, how we got to where we are today. So we're in, you know, June 19th of 1986. Crack was new. Here in New York, the murder rate was four times what it is now. But there's an event that happens. There's this very popular college basketball player, Lenny Bias. He gets drafted number two by the Celtics. They have a party on campus in College Park. He dies of an overdose. I can't tell you how important that event is because Congress responds by passing a law that a drug trafficking offense in federal court then is going to be mandatory minimum 10 years, maximum life. But Congress made a mistake. They triggered those mandatory minimums by drug quantity and drug type. 100 grams of powder cocaine were treated the same as one gram of crack. That seems to be a little bit not well thought out. Well, the Congress blew it. You know, let's face it, crack was an inner city, poor neighborhood drug. So there was a racially disparate impact of these crack prosecutions. We need to come to grips with the fact that we have an overly punitive and racially discriminatory system. And Judge Gleason explained to us how these mandatory minimum sentences have driven plea rates higher and higher. One way in which prosecutors use the powers that Congress gave them is to say to someone, the way you're going to get out from under an, an unjust mandatory sentence is you plead guilty. You know, the federal criminal trial is kind of disappearing. Before we had this regime, the guilty plea rate used to be 80%. We now have a federal guilty plea rate of over 97%. Fewer of 3% of the cases go to trial. Prosecutors are determining how much time they're going to get before it, it goes to, to trial. You're right. Sometimes they use their power to compel an outcome that's unjust. 